Hello everyone, iSchool Tech here. It is that time again, iOS 17 Beta 3 is here, and so I have dissected this update to find every new change in feature within, no matter how small it may be. So in this video, I present to you every new change in feature in iOS 17 Beta 3. Let's waste no time and get straight into it. Alright, so iOS 17 Beta 3 on the right, and iOS 17 Beta 2 on the left. In Beta 3, Apple Music now shows song credits, so if we tap on the ellipsis icon here, you can see at the top of the menu we have View Credits. We can tap on this, brings up an entirely new page. On Beta 2, this does not exist. Now, in this menu, you can now view a song's full lyrics. These are not time sync lyrics, they are just listed out for you, so this is a really welcome change. And now, in this menu, you can also view a song's lossless and Dolby Atmos information. So you can see here that this song does not feature Dolby Atmos, but does support lossless audio. And on Beta 3, when haptic touching on a song, there is now an eye icon instead of a chevron. In Safari, the bug where the background in the tab view would no longer be blurred has been fixed and it looks much better. Reachability has been fixed, so reachability now takes the shape of the device and the wallpaper is blurred once more. So there have been a couple of text changes within beta 3. One of them was actually introduced with beta 2 but not visible until beta 3 and that is the update tonight there is no longer the text that says it will take about 20 minutes to install that has been removed. And in the program list here, you can see that previously it was a numerical list, now it is just bulleted. Now there have been some changes to the plus menu in messages, so the first one being a couple of new icons. You can see here that photos actually shows your most recent photos, and location now has a gray circle around the blue one instead of all blue. Now the animations have been slightly tweaked as well. In beta 2 and beta 1, they were a lot more bouncy as you can see here, and when content would come onto the screen or go off of it, you can see it would kind of move to the side as well as blur a little bit. In beta 3, that's no longer the case. It is a lot less bouncy than it was previously, and now they just kind of fade in and fade out. They don't really move to the side at all. I'm not sure I like this change, so I hope it kind of reverts back in a future beta, but we'll see. On beta 3, when opening the home app for the first time, there is now a new splash screen. And in podcasts, there is now a see more about this episode pop-up. In photos in recently deleted, when selecting photos to either delete or recover, they have replaced the two separate buttons with one menu where you can now recover or delete. In photos, people, pets, and places is now just people and places. When taking a photo, the level haptics have returned. In FaceTime, the actual cell heights are once again shorter. Previously in beta 2, they were noticeably taller. In the clock app, in timers, the recent timers now have a play button instead of saying the word start. And in mail, there is no longer the connecting text. When creating a new reminder, in details, there is an updated priority icon that has a much bolder and more rounded check mark. Previously, it looked something like this. In the app store, in both games and apps, Apple has removed the divider line that would separate the headers from the actual content. Previously, it looked like this. It's a lot more cleaner in my opinion, and it's more in line with apps like Apple Music. The phone recents page has been condensed down once more. It looks a lot better in my opinion. Previously in beta 2, they had spaced these out a little bit, but now more content can fit on the display. Now in beta 3, you can actually slide to report unknown numbers as junk if you have missed their calls. Previously, you could not do this. In beta 3, the AQI widget in Maps now hovers above the menu when tapping on your profile. Previously, it would just stay at the bottom, hidden when the menu was open. Alright, so there have been a lot of changes to mental well-being and state of mind in health with beta 3. To start off in the today view for mental well-being, there is an updated icon for state of mind to better represent the changes that you'll see in the next few pages. Now overall colors in state of mind have been updated, so if we go ahead and tap log here, you can see that this is now a little bit more green, this is blue, and when you actually go into the next menu to choose how you're feeling, you can see all of the colors have been updated. They look a lot nicer, you can see here, much more refined. There is now updated state of mind information card text here. You can see there's a lot less words here. Each one of them has been updated. When logging in emotion or mood, the actual time picker has been redesigned in beta 3. So in beta 2, this was added and it looked like this. Now in beta 3, it looks like this. And if we tap into it, 
it brings up a full screen picker. And now in beta 3, the actual emotion and mood text is noticeably bolder as well as the icon. Now there was previously a background around the next button in beta 3 that has been removed. It looks a lot nicer in my opinion. And now in beta 3, you no longer have the option to skip when asked what best describes a feeling. Now in the state of mind calendar, the eye icon next to the text is much bolder. Previously, it was a lot thinner. Now I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this change, but the air quality platter is now taller because a lot of options have been enlarged and rearranged. Now, as a result, there is a lot of empty space here, so I'm hoping that this can be put to use sometime in a future beta. In averages, the monthly averages information text has been once again reattached to this little graph here. Previously, it was just under the text. Now the wind platter has an updated design as well, so in beta 3, the text is not as bold and a lot of the things have been moved horizontally, so you can see the wind and gust information has been moved to the left quite a bit and the compass has been moved over to the right a lot more. There is also a divider in between the wind and gust information as well, which looks a little bit better in my opinion. Now of course I would like to see some of this stuff be a little bit more vertically aligned because it does still seem to be quite a bit off, but we'll hope to see that in a future beta. And now in wind, the actual units have been slightly updated. So previously it was units over time, and now it is units per time. So some more unit updates in pressure here. You can see in inches of mercury and millimeters of mercury, there is no longer a space in the units. Previously, there was a space in between the IN and HG and MM and HG. In the contacts application, the buttons at the top here, the edit and arrow buttons, are now more discernible and darker against the background than in beta 2. In the translate application, the show grammatical gender now has an icon next to it. Previously, it did not. Now in shortcuts under suggestions from your apps, there have been quite a few coloring changes. You can see here in books, they're now using darker colors. And if we scroll down, Freeform now has a dark blue background, Music Recognition has a light to dark blue gradient, and the Tips option has also now gained a new gradient. Now another change in Music Recognition is that the icon itself has been updated, now it is a waveform icon instead of the Shazam icon. Now a couple of changes in the Tips application, the first one being that the Setup Checklist now has a redesigned icon, this is what it looks like, previously it looked like this, and now the actual Thumbnail images have been zoomed in quite a bit here. You can see that the top and bottom of the iPhone is cut off more than it was on the previous beta. In beta 3, the clock 3 widget has been reverted to its previous version. You can see that it is no longer transparent and no longer has a dark mode variant. Previously in beta 2, it became transparent, which looked quite nice and did have a dark mode version, but that has since been changed. The first city clock widget now is called city 1. Previously, it was just city. And in the lock screen time editor, you can see that the translucent option has a new preview. It is a little bit darker than before. I will say I like the previous one quite a bit better. In the lock screen editor, Apple has finally added a light mode version of the add widget menu. And this also applies for the date and time up here as well. Now on the lock screen editor, the widget previews are actually quite a bit lighter. So if we go into the calendar, for example, here, you can see that previously it had this darker look to it. Now it looks a lot nicer. It is much lighter than before. Apple has once again updated the thumbnail images for the weather and astronomy wallpapers here, this time being the Earth, Moon, and Mars wallpapers. I'm not sure I like these th new thumbnail images, but they are changes. Now the moon wallpaper has also been updated with a change I'm not sure I like either. It has a more flat look to it. Previously you could see the craters a little bit more and it doesn't look as sharp. It is also slightly darker than beta 2. Now in beta 3 the moon detail has been updated once again to not only reflect the changes of the other moon wallpaper but now it no longer covers the time again. In beta 2 it had covered the time and now once more it no longer does. In the control center in beta 3, the not playing font is slightly smaller than it was on beta 2. In the expanded home device menu in the control center, there is now a line indicating the top portion of the menu. Previously content would just kind of disappear with an invisible line. Now there is an actual line that goes from side to side showing the cutoff. And now in beta 3, the actual header or the device name now uses a noticeably smaller font size. Previously it was noticeably bigger. This looks a lot better in my opinion, a lot more refined. Now in the camera options in the control center, there are new 
icons for take portrait and take portrait selfie previously they were this person with the background and now it is just the circle with the f in it now of course this change also applies to the haptic touch menu when you long press on the camera application on the home screen these new icons show up for take portrait and take portrait selfie here as well when expanding on the hearing toggle in the control center, there is a new animation. So in beta three, it fades in and fades back out. In beta two, it just kind of appears. In the iCloud family settings, there is now an updated icon for family checklist. Now it looks like this. Previously, it had stars in the center. In the iPhone storage settings, the colors and their categories have been shuffled around a little bit here. You can see that music is now yellow, podcast is now green, and photos is now teal. Previously, podcasts was yellow, photos was green, and music was teal. Family passwords is now share passwords with family in beta 3, and share passwords with family now has an updated icon where it's just two blue people. Previously, it looked like this. Now, security recommendations also has updated text. Previously, it just said security risks found. Now, it actually shows a preview of some of the websites that have security recommendations. The options for new password and new shared group now have updated icons. Previously, they were filled in, and now they are not. When creating a new profile for Safari, the icons for the profile are now gray. Previously, they were black. There's also a redesigned menu for selecting icons. Previously, you would just scroll through them horizontally, and now you can tap the ellipsis icon and bring up this pop-up menu with all the different icon choices. And now the icon previews here are slightly smaller and have been repositioned a little bit, making them a little bit more center. You can see here in beta one, they are shifted over a little bit and you can even see that they are not fully vertically aligned as they are in beta three. And last but not least, iOS 17 beta three runs quite a bit smoother than beta two for me. All of the little micro stutters and micro lags that I've noticed in beta two have seemed to be resolved in beta three. So it has been a lot smoother. All right, everyone, that is every new change and feature included within iOS 17 beta 3. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like down below and of course subscribe to the channel with notifications enabled so you always know what's included in the next beta releases. Also, if you've made it this far, you are absolutely amazing. And if you do have any suggestions on how to make this content even better, make sure to drop a comment below. Now that is all I have for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.